morning. Welcome to this day, my daily video devotional. Last night we celebrated my youngest daughter, Autumn, her 19th birthday. Uh, she wanted to go downtown Atlanta to a mystery dinner theater. So a lot of our friends, we went there. We had a full table. It was a great time of laughs and great food. And just some wonderful family entertainment. Now, we were there, and in the midst of our meal, we were watching this drama unfold as the actors were portraying a political drama. It was a murder mystery, and they would drop clues in each act, and we were to try to figure out who the murderer was. We were to solve the mystery. But do you understand the greatest mystery that has ever been in the human race has been revealed unto us, and that is the mystery of the gospel. The scripture says that it was hid in Christ for generations and generations and only the believers, only those that could see with eyes of faith can unlock and see this mystery that's been made known. It's foolishness to the world as we've been talking about, but to you and I, it's been given, it's been revealed. But many, many times we take this wonderful gift, the greatest gift of all, and that's the gift of the gospel, all of the riches in Jesus Christ, everything is wrapped up into the gospel. The answer for every need in our life, the answer for every problem in our life, everything is found in the gospel of Christ. But many times we take that gift and we just hold on to it and we do nothing with it. It's like Christmas morning. Those of us that are parents, you can relate with this. Uh, we, our, our child wants a certain uh, present or a certain toy, they circle it on the J.C. Penney catalog or wh wherever or online. They tell you, "Go look at this, mom and dad. I want, I want that for Christmas." And so you and I, we want to give them the desires of their heart. We want to bless them, and so we search far and wide for that gift. We will sacrifice. We will save our money, and then when we finally get it, we want the presentation to be perfect. We wrap it up in this fancy paper, cover it with ribbons and bows, place it under the tree, and we just can't wait. The anticipation is growing. It's ramping up for the day for that gift to be revealed because we want to sit there and watch our children just be in utter joy as they unwrap that gift and it's revealed to them and their eyes are, are wide-eyed with wonderment and amazement and then we watch them play with that and, and it's just a great payoff for us as parents. But can you imagine if you, you spent all that time, you spent all of that money and all that preparation and the day for this to be revealed, you give that gift to your child and they do nothing with it. They just take the box, the paper that, that's wrapped in paper and ribbons and they don't open it and they don't they don't get to enjoy it to its extent. They just take it and hold it. It's kind of what we do with the gospel sometimes. You see, Paul said in Ephesians, Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation, the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. It's been revealed to us, the gift of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So what do we do with it? Well, firstly, we believe it. We receive it. We begin to live in that freedom that we've been talking about. We begin to realize because of the gospel, we've been made sons and daughters. We've been adopted into the family of God. He is now our Father. We are joint heirs with Christ. We have obtained this inheritance, verse 11 talks about. And then what do we do? We share it. The gift is... Is, is so much better when we are sharing that with others. We enjoy it more when others get to enjoy it along with us. Last night, I made this comment when we were uh, leaving the dinner theater. I told Kelly, I said, you know, that was a lot of fun. But if that was something that I was going to go to with just by myself, just to watch the show, I wouldn't enjoy that. What made it enjoyable for us last night was we had a table full of our friends laughing with each other, laughing at each other as we had to act out certain parts of the play and the mystery. And that's how the gospel is. We enjoy it more, and it's more meaningful when we begin to share it. And so today I want to encourage you to share the gospel. I want to encourage you to send...
Today, take some time and send an encouraging note, a Facebook message, a post, a text, make a phone call. Share the compassion of Christ. You don't have to go through the, the entire scriptures if, 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 if you don't have that opportunity. But I tell you what will happen was when you begin to show genuine compassion for others, genuine love for others, you know what happens? You begin to build relationships. And then when the time is right, when the day for that to be revealed into their life, your friends don't have to be in the dark anymore. The Holy Spirit will give you an opportunity and He will bring to remembrance how you can effectively share the gospel because you've already spent time in preparation preparing the day that you're going to reveal this gift that God has revealed to you and I. The gospel is very important. It's the answer for everything in our lives. Don't just hold it for yourselves. Share it today in Jesus' name.